Hey guys! Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever! I missed you so much! I've been dying to come back on YouTube and just talk to you guys. This is actually all I want to do today is talk to you guys, hear about what you guys have been up to in the comment section. I've kept in touch with you guys through Snapchat, on Instagram. I do a lot of Snap stories all, this, all the time or Instagram stories. I know I haven't done an update on the move or the home design or anything like that but there has been so much work that has been done to the house already so the kitchen is almost done we just need to install the faucet so once the faucet the backsplash and um, what else the handles and the knobs for the kitchen are installed I'm gonna give you guys the big kitchen reveal but we've been here for a week and a half super excited this house feels like it's our home and I just love living here and we live in a new town and it's so awesome just going to a new nail salon where they did my nails and they actually did JLo's nails too so I was like hey but my birthday was three days ago I turned 29 and I love it I love getting older I'm really enjoying it because I grow, I've been growing to love myself more and more each and every single day that passes by. I remember when I turned 25, I had like a big breakdown and a, I guess a quarter life crisis is what you would call it. And I was so depressed for several years after that. And now it's like I found, it's like I'm finding who I am and what I want to do and my passion and what I want to pursue in my life. Um, the big trip that I took to Costa Rica where I had this big life epiphany has a lot to do with um, just the things that I want to pursue which I'm really excited about. So yeah, I turned 29. I had this awesome birthday dinner at this restaurant in downtown LA called Mas Malo and I had some like really spicy drinks and cocktails with like chile serrano and like um, tajin on the rim. They were so good guys. I had both of two of them and I had some friends over um, It was totally last minute because I wasn't planning anything for my birthday But then August 20 came and I was like, I gotta celebrate I gotta Happy birthday to you Happy birthday I can't believe that last year that I'm gonna be in my 20s Gosh, the 20s sound just so amazing. I just called my parents. Uh, one of my sisters couldn't make it. Um, and I called some of my friends and they came over and I was so happy just to have dinner and drinks and conversation with them. So thank you to all of my friends and my family members who came by for the birthday dinner. All I could ask for for my birthday was just having the people that I love around me. That's all I can absolutely ask for. And I totally got what I wanted. So thank you so much. And I also want to give a special thanks to Smashbox Cosmetics and to Sigma Beauty who delivered flowers to, well, they had someone deliver flowers to my house that morning and it was just really special. These are actually the ones that Sigma sent me and I thought they just looked so gorgeous with this background. This is actually going to be my closet, guys, and I'm downsizing because remember I had the closet the size of a garage? No more. There is no need for me to have that much stuff. Plus, I was never able to get ready and dressed in the morning. I felt so uninspired by all of the stuff that I had in my room and I just want to live more of a minimalistic lifestyle. So I'm so happy that I've been able to get rid of so much stuff that was just like on top of me. Clutter is, I think, one of the best things that came from the, or removing clutter from my life is one of the best things that came from this move because the house looks so beautiful just with a few things, you know what I mean? Instead of having like so many things, I was so attached to memories with objects and I don't need to have the object to have the memory. Like I had stuff from high school days, guys, like that crazy. The next thing that's happening, or the other thing that happened, uh, was something really sad, actually. If you guys have been with me for the past nine, eight, eight, nine years that I've been doing YouTube, that you know who Chanel is. She was my Pomeranian, and I've had her for, she lived about eight years. She actually passed away during the Mammoth camping trip, so it's been a few weeks. Um, since she passed and that's something that oh when you lose a pet it's really tough actually and I've lost a pet before when I was in high school we had a family dog and 
his name was Happy, but he was like a tough dog and he ruled like, he was like the leader of all the dogs, but his name was Happy and I used to write about him all like all the time in like book reports or not book reports, but like reports about me and about your pets and things like that. I remember being in elementary and writing down like my dog Happy loves to eat Cheerios because he loved to eat Cheerios with milk. And he passed away, he got attacked by a lot of dogs and I remember the day that he passed away, like my dad was so sad and he didn't know how to tell us and um, we just saw him in the corner of our yard and he was in the corner like, you know, dying. He had been there for a few days and he was dying and he eventually did die and when we found out, my sister tonight like cried so hard. We, like, if you have pets, you know that pets are not just an animal. Pets are a family member because the same pain that I felt for my grandma when she passed away is the same pain that I felt when Chanel passed away recently. And I couldn't believe it. And what ended up happening was that we got invited on this camping trip by our neighbors and they have a big dog and they were gonna take their dog. And we were like, you know what? We're gonna be gone for a few days. Um, I don't wanna leave, like we don't wanna leave them behind because we always leave them um, with the dog walker. And we thought that it would be a great idea to bring Chanel and Gizmo, who are both Pomeranians, so tiny little dogs, and Chomper, who is a, a French bulldog, and that's Isaac's little dog. And we brought them all along because we wanted them to be a part of the family. Obviously they are, but we wanted them to be a part of the trip and enjoy it with us. And that was a very vital mistake that we ended up doing because Pomeranians are not camping dogs and neither is a French bulldog. You know, they're small little dogs. And Chanel actually passed away from a heat stroke and we were we actually went hiking and this is like an elevation in Lake Mammoth. You're like elevated hundreds of feet above sea level. So the air on the top is a lot thinner. And one of the days, um, the second day that we were there, because we were only there for two nights, the second day, um, we took her and we didn't go like hiking all crazy or anything like that, but she was like panting really heavily, like <sighs> like that, like really, really heavily. And she didn't look right. So I carried her most of the way. I put her on my backpack and then the camp ranger, camp ranger told me not to put her in my backpack because the dogs need to bring oxygen into their bodies through their paws. And if they're inside a hot bag, um, you know, she wasn't stuffed in there obviously, but it was still in a bag and her head was peeking out. Um, then she wasn't gonna be able to feel better. It's actually gonna make her feel worse. So I took her out of my backpack and um, I carried her and stuff and we only walked for maybe 10 minutes and we came back because we only went to go see a monument. We didn't go like on this crazy hike because we also had little kids with us, you know? I kept, um, we Jesse and I kept giving her a bowl of water to drink but she really wasn't drinking a lot of water. She was just panting really heavily. Um, and kind of almost like not being able to breathe and Jesse and I feel so guilty because we feel like we could have prevented that by not taking them. So Chanel was barely eating anything the night that we got back and she was constipated or actually, yeah, she couldn't poop. And when she was pooping, it was like diarrhea, but very little. And we woke up in the morning and I was like, all right, today's a, a good day, it's a brand new day. Chanel looks like she's feeling a lot better. She was happy, she was walking and stuff. And um, and yeah, so we get in the car, right? We're gonna drive back to Cali. This is like a four hour drive from Lake Mammoth and, or down to LA. And Chanel's just in the back seat with Chomper and Gizmo and they're just chilling, you know, just relaxing. They took some naps. We stopped halfway through the, through the trip and they peed a little bit. And then we get back on the car and Jesse and I, you know, we're super stinky. So we're like, oh, we can't wait till we get home so we can shower and blah, 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 blah. We get home. First thing I do is um, go upstairs after we dismounted the truck. We go upstairs and I, I go upstairs and I showered. And I was feeling good. I was just like, oh, I'm going to shower. I'm going to paint my nails. 
and I went to my beauty room, I grabbed a little box of nail polishes that I had, and I was walking down the stairs with my box of nail polishes, my hair wrapped up in a little towel, like freshly just out the shower, and Isaac was playing his video game downstairs already, and Jesse was outside putting some stuff away from the truck. And I walked downstairs and we had the couches like in an L shape and we had a little gate. So, you know, cause we keep them in the living room so they don't go all over the house and pee all crazy. So they have a big space where we watch television. And I have my box, I look at Chanel and she's just laying there in her favorite spot, you know? And I moved the gate a little bit and she saw me, like she lifted her head and I was like, oh, Chanel. She lifted her head and she died. She lifted her head, she laid it back down. And to me it was odd, because at first I thought she was sleeping and I startled her because I opened the gate. Um, but she looked at me and then she, and then she passed away in that moment. So I saw her pass away. And you know, she laid back down and she had her mouth open and her eyes open. Sorry. <laughs> She laid back down and she had her eyes open and her mouth open and I was like, oh my gosh. I went outside and I told Jesse, I'm like, I'm like, babe, I think Chanel, Chanel died. I think she died. Um, he's like, what? And then he goes inside and he checks on her and I'm like far away from the kitchen, like looking at the living room, like, please don't tell me that she's dead. And then he just looks at me and he has this look in his face like, like she died. And I really feel like she waited to see me to die. Because, you know, I, I had Chanel since she was a little girl. Since she was a little tiny little puppy, um, that's when Jesse gifted Chanel to me back in Texas when we were boyfriend and girlfriend and we had our first apartment. and. I remember he gave me like this furry little baby and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. And I like instantly fell in love with her because she was just the most adorable, cutest little thing ever. She would cry at night because she's cried like a little baby. <laughs> and I remember having like separation anxiety when I would have to go to work and stuff because I would put her in a crate and I would always like look at the door and the crate before I left and just be like, oh, I don't want to leave her in there and stuff. So she's been through, she went through so much with us and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't like believe that a normal day just turns into a sad day. And all Jesse and I did was cry. That's all we did, we cried all day. I actually went a little crazy because I kept calling her that same day like Chanel, Chanel. Like I was waiting for her to come. And I actually have something really special. Um, this is her collar that I kept. And I can't talk. Um, whenever I would call her for food or anything or a snack, she would always make this noise. Like her little charm would always twinkle. So I kept this to remind me of her. And I also kept her favorite little stuffed bear. And it still has her hair. And I have her picture, one of her first pictures. When she was a baby, she's so cute. And this is one of the first pictures. It's just the cutest little thing, isn't she? <laughs> we didn't know what to do with her body, so I called um, one of my friends, my neighbor. Um, I told her what happened as soon as it happened. Um, and she recommended that, um, well, she said that one of her friends cremated her dog. And that's what we ended up doing. Jesse picked her up, and she was lifeless. and. I remember just like sitting above her body for a few minutes and I like, I swear to you, I saw like a white mist come out of her body like seconds after she died. Like I saw like a white mist while I was hugging Jessie and crying. I saw something come out of her body. And I just kept 
wishing that she would wake up if I called her, you know, because I feel like she did wait for me because I was her mom. So we had her cremated. And this beautiful poem called, I can't even read it. It's called Rainbow Bridge Poem. And um, it's such a beautiful poem that kind of gives me hope that there is an afterlife. These are her little paws with her name Chanel. They did this at the vet where they cremated her. And now she's in here. Which is really crazy to think. I haven't opened it and I don't want to open it because I don't want to see something that might make me feel really uncomfortable but I just don't want to see that they're her ashes. So I keep that in my bedroom. Um, I miss her. It's really hard to cope with the death of a dog. Of a pet. <sighs> because they really are like family members. And no matter what happened, because um, Chanel and I, we were really, really close. Um, and then I had Isaac. And most of my attention went to Isaac. So I didn't give her as much attention as I used to. Before I had him. But she always showed me so much love. Like dogs just love you unconditionally. They don't judge you. Like they literally all they want to do is love you. So yeah. We told Isaac and he was... Um, he started crying a lot the first day. But we just told him that Chanel went to heaven. And that one day we're going to see her again. And he cried a lot, just the first, the first time that I told him. And after that, even that night, um, my mom and my sis, my dad and my sister and my niece came, and he was like, "Oh, you know," to my niece Bella, Bella, um, Chanel's in heaven now. She's in heaven. He was happy, like he accepted him. And sometimes he gets sad. He'll be like, "Oh, Chanel," like when he thinks about her. Special thanks to my friend Jorge and my friend Flor, who were um, a few of the people that sent me messages right away after I told you guys online that Chanel passed away. And that meant so much to me. And my friend Morgan, she came over, she took me out. She has a pet too. Um, she has her dog, uh, her cat, Cagney, and she's had her for many, over 10 years, like many years. And she understands the love that you can have for a pet. So if you ever go through this, um, there's so many of us that have gone through this. Make sure that you have people in your life that can support you. Um, reach out to friends who have have pets or who have lost pets because they're going to be the ones who understand the most because there is people out there that look at a dog as just a dog or if your dog dies really like, oh, so your dog dies that's another dog but it's nothing like that and a special thank you to all of you guys as well um you guys are actually the ones that shared a poem the rainbow bridge poem with me and i absolutely loved it um, it gives me hope that it just painted such a beautiful picture of, of what I can hope for one day. And you guys also shared pictures of your pets that are still with us and also of your pets that have passed away. So thank you so much for sharing that very, those very personal photos with me on Facebook, um, because that's where I saw all of them. And it really meant a lot to me, honestly, guys. It really meant so much to me, and I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much because as life happens, I I have you guys. Even though, like, when I say you guys, it's never 
I can never picture a face. You know, it's just an energy. It's, it's what I feel. So thank you so much. That means so much to me. I love and I appreciate all of you guys. And um, one thing that I learned from losing Chanel is that Life is so unexpected, you know, life can happen and change so drastically, so quickly. One moment I have my beautiful Chanel just living and just walking and just being who she is. And literally the next second, she's gone. So don't take the people in your life for granted because you never know what can happen. appreciate them tell them that you love them because i wish that i could tell her that i was sorry for taking her enjoy every single day try to be happy if you can or at least have a positive attitude um tell the people that you love how you feel about them if you did something that you regret doing or say something that you regret saying t say sorry just say sorry and, and mean it. Love the people in your life. Appreciate them. And thank God every single day that you wake up and that you have the people in your life that you have. Say thank you for giving your family to you. Thank you for my friends. And picture every single one of your friends. <laughs> Thank you for my pets. And just say thank you. Because we are so blessed.